This is my first major task since I'm packing. There was an acacia tree which stood here. Um, you can just about make out the stump of it. Which decided to kill itself whilst I was away. Um, and this is the greenery that remains from it. Which will kindly chopped up and then dragged over towards the bonfire. To be honest, it's a bit closer to the bonfire than I would like it, but I'm not going to drag it all back. I'm just going to light this and hope that that doesn't also go on fire. Anyway, so uh, task one is dealing with the remains of that tree. Such a shame. It was a lovely tree when it was in flower. But there you go. That's what acacias do. They live fast, they die young. <laughs> As you can see, that didn't quite go to plan. I tried and tried and tried, and this just didn't want to catch. It's damp because it's been quite wet and cold and also pretty green. Um, anyway, so it has burnt down a bit. What I hope I have achieved anyway is drying out some of that wood so that when I come to try again, maybe in a couple of days' time, I might have more success. And I've still got all of this to go. So, uh, that's not the best of news, but I guess I'm just being honest. Not everything works out the way that I would hope. Um, but what I have done in the interim is a couple of the other chores that I wanted to get done today so far. Um, that's uh, sharpen my chainsaw. Um, because I gather it needed it and then the other thing I like to do since I've been away it seems that it's been pretty windy and um, these trees in front of the house although they're an evergreen type of tree obviously evergreen trees still lose their leaves when they die the leaves that is so um, I've been raking up some of these leaves into piles on the lawn and now I'm going to gather them up in my wheelbarrow and add them to my bonfire. At this time of year this isn't really a fire danger issue but I do just like to keep on top of it and um, that makes my life a bit easier come spring. You'll see there that I haven't been too thorough because again, you know, so it is winter and I don't mind leaves on the lawn. I think it's atmospheric. But this was excessive, so I'm going to tidy some of this up. I can live with the lawn like this at this time of year, but come summer I would be way more meticulous because obviously all of this represents a fire danger. So I'm going to go and tidy up my piles now. <laughs> There we go, what I managed to get off the lawn, and that's a bigger than normal wheelbarrow at that, so I think that was worth doing. Not that um, people would notice much difference. Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> I'm saving myself that much work come spring. <laughs> this is what remains of the once mighty acacia tree. You can probably see how it just... Uh, move around out of the bright light. I just went snap. <laughs> so um, I think Will and I are going to have to fight this one out because obviously I want to burn this <laughs> and Will wants to add this to his collection of woodworking wood. <laughs> so well we'll see who wins that one. Well to be fair quite a lot of this Will's already processed and what I'm not burning on the bonfire has gone onto our seasoning pile. But uh, we look at wood sometimes as quite different eyes. <laughs> Being back from the UK, coming from summer to winter, it's just so different here. There's like a vibrancy of summer that is lacking at this time of year. No garden looks great at this time of year. But anyway, <laughs> it's nice to be back and see how it's all looking now, which is to say not that different than when I went away. Um, citrus trees are still looking good, lemons still got lemons, the new citruses are still going away nicely. 
um, yet yeah, more signs of spring. Um, I've noticed that uh, a few of the daffodils have started to decide to flower, um, like this one and this one. Now this is the equivalent of December in the Northern Hemisphere. But because of our latitude, maybe think of it more as winter in Spain than winter in the UK. Anyway, it's nice to see those signs of spring in winter. Uh, that little, I think it's a Siberian iris coming into flower too. Um, it was in a giant clump there and um, so I split it into four and I've dotted them around the property and this is one of the four. This is the plant that surprises me the most. This is the spudlia that before I went away remember I was saying seemed like it was coming into flower which it is. So I'm hoping that it'll flower reasonably early and then I can um, cut it right back. I knew this was going to be quite a big plant but this is maybe a bit bigger than I was expecting and it's very dominant of this bed at the moment. Um, I partly wanted that there. I've, I've put in a row of what I hope should be bigger plants, obviously with shorter plants either side of that, like a spine of taller plants, essentially to act as a bit of a screen and to provide us some privacy. Um, so protecting this side of the house from this fire break on the other side of our fence, which sometimes people and vehicles go up and down. So the, that was my point to sort of just, that was my intention to disguise the house a bit and give us a sense of privacy. Um, what else is happening? So this is the um, Chinese pistachio in full dormant mode. Oh, this is the um, red bark dogwood doing what it ought, looking all red. Nice, a little bit of, of colourful interest. We're going to have a quick look. I don't know if you noticed, but the camellias also decided to start coming into flower. That's another plant that does um, tend to do that quite early, although it'll be looking at its best later on. But um, you might be able to see one or two flowers starting to poke through. I found with this plant that um, it pays dividends to really, really keep it well watered over summer. Um, and this helps it to flower better spring time. Oh God, there's even a honeybee up there. Can you see that? There. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, yes, um, but I hadn't really needed to do very much of that this summer because it's been so wet and well, you can't really hear it, but in places it's still very, very squelchy underfoot. Um, yeah, do you like my new garden ornament? <laughs> it's a blue tit on a spade. <laughs> I'm hoping to incorporate more sorts of artworks around the garden, but uh, it's still early days. Early days, and I've been envious of all those beautiful gardens I visited back in the UK. I think that my garden will never ever be able to look like that. It's just a different climate, different grain conditions, different soil. But nevertheless, I still do endeavour to create a nice garden full of plants. So <laughs> we'll see how we go. We're the other side of the solstice now. So this is the, the winter solstice that is. So that's a good time for me. It means that the days are starting to get longer, which is great for the power, but also they're still relatively cool. So that means I can work outside more comfortably and there's less to fear from in terms of stumbling across snakes. They'll still be hibernating for a while yet. So this is a, a good time of year. This is probably the best time of year. <laughs> can you see Vita? Hello Vita. My favorite quarter of the year 
the winter solstice to spring equinox quarter so hopefully we'll be able to crack on and get lots of little things done together. These are those bits of lawn that I was working on just prior to going away. Um, you may remember if you saw that video that my rotavator wasn't working but I said that I had to crack on with it for various reasons and the well, principal reason was because I knew I was going back to the UK though I didn't want to tell you that um, at that time I wanted it to be a surprise <laughs> so I just needed to get this done because the window for getting this done is quite small in order that this is nice and happy before we potentially enter the horrible temperatures of summer not horrible for me but horrible for the new lawn so I mean you'd hardly know that was bare mud three weeks ago so I'm quite happy with that you know still it's still got the dip it as I mentioned at the time it's still not perfectly level but um this is no croquet lawn or cricket pitch so I can tolerate that the important thing is that it's better since I've been using the barrow there, just a heads up, a quick task for next week. I'm going to be replacing the wheel. Um, it's not something I choose to do lightly, but no matter how much I pump, this wheel is just, or this tire is just completely flat. So it's possibly just a simple fix like an inner tube. However, because I use this barrow so much, it's one of my principal working tools. You can get tyres for this brand, Sherlock, um, that I claim to be no inflate. So, whilst they're pretty pricey, um, sometimes I think you just you have to bite the bullet and make these investments because they work out to be of much more benefit in the long run than the sort of brief pain of the outlay so um, I'm going to measure it up make sure I get the right one they come in different widths um, and then I'll be putting that on next week this is okay for transporting lighter loads like these leaves but even then it kind of struggles and it's difficult to push and heavier loads you can just forget it so it's an important task and I will tackle that next week Look at this, miracles can happen. <laughs> Essentially I um, put that barrow of leaves on the bonfire from earlier and thought well that'll be okay for next time. <clears throat> then it started to smoke and then it started to really smoke so I came out from the house and had a look and the whole thing had gone alight. So I've been able to uh, clear all of that fallen tree and um, burn it all down to the ground. So that's a bit of a result. <laughs> if you've missed them these last couple of weeks, I'm happy to report kangaroos are still here. This one, big male. There's actually quite a lot more up here, but they're very hard to see. There we are. <laughs> Plenty of kangaroos and also I've seen loads and loads of wallabies. So the wildlife is still here. If I spin round actually, you can probably hear them more than see them, but currawongs still in force also. I'm going to give them some biscuits actually, I think that's what they're asking for. Right, look. Here we go. Looks like the parrots are interested also. Get some seed out for the parrots too. Well, I think the coral ones will have quite a lot of this. 
they like biscuits but um they won't say no to seed they won't say no to seed too let's go and see what happens no Vita go on see you cat yeah just as I thought <laughs> There is a bit of a hierarchy. The parrots will have a stab at it, but they are a bit wary of the currawongs. Pretty harmonious at the moment, though. Very cold nights at the moment, frosts every morning, down to close to zero if not sub-zero so and it'll be getting dark in about an hour we've just passed the shortest day of the year so just helping my birdie friends out <laughs> i thought i'd wrap it up this week um i'm still sort of getting used to being back and um so not much has been happening beyond what i've been showing you um, before I go though, <clears throat> I thought I'd just quickly show you my uh, winter mass decorations. have some here on my piano and over here on my bookcase. <laughs> and um, going up my stairs. <laughs> uh, this is because Christmas like I was used to in the Northern Hemisphere just didn't seem to work in Australia where it's summer and so a lot of the symbolism the you know chestnuts and the open fire evergreen plants springing evergreen stuff into the house candles um tinsel <clears throat> just isn't quite right when it's summer outside so even before we moved back uh, Will and I decided that we'd have a midwinter festival um, in which we could make better use of our um, proper Christmas decorations. We've got alternative, more summery stuff for actual Christmas. Um, so this gives us a chance to dig those things out and enjoy um, the feeling of a wintry Christmas because we plan this uh, festival around the winter solstice, which is just come and gone. So. <laughs> There we go. Winter Mass is underway. A bit late this year because I was in the UK, but um, nevertheless, it's nice to come home when it's cold and dark outside to something that's a bit jolly. Um, I hope you have a good week, whatever you've been up to, and a nice weekend, and I will see you next week where I imagine things will be a bit more back to normal. Lots of wood processing, some more processing and then maybe a bit more wood processing. So uh, bye! <laughs>